All right, we're back here at the WEC on the campus of NJIT where the Highlanders on Education Day put up a very impressive 75-57 victory over Lipscomb. And my pleasure now to bring in NJIT's top assistant, Jeff Rafferty, for this edition of the RAF Report. You're a guy that fancies defense, right? You like a good defensive effort. You look at what the Highlanders have done recently, including back-to-back -back wins. The defense has been very impressive. Let's start there. What did you like about the way this team played against this Bison's offense? Well, it was a similar game plan to North Florida in terms of taking away the three. Um, anytime, anytime you hold a, a good sh three-point shooting team like Lipscomb to two for 15, you put yourself in a pretty good position to win. The other thing is the kid, uh, Azudala, is, is m one of the top two or three post players in the league. Uh, so they're kind of a two-headed monster. Um, he he st he still got his 20 tonight, but it took him 21 shots. So that's a good recipe um, when you when you hold the team to two for 15 from three, and then their best player scores 20 points, but it's on 21 shots. So I, I thought it was a I thought it was a good team effort uh, defensively, and I I think we did an excellent job, um, you know, holding them to one. They ended up with five offensive rebounds, four were in the second half, and I think two or three of them were on one possession. So. We defended and rebounded, and that gave us a chance to win, and, and we got a lot of efforts, uh, a lot of guys uh, contributing on the offensive end. Yeah, I want to stay there because you mentioned the shoot. I was asking about Suleman Diakite, okay? That's a tough assignment. Sure. You know? and, yep. and, and you can see the numbers, but you see the 8 of 21 shooting from sure. the floor. So how was this a sign, of, or was it a sign, of how he's developing as a player? Yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think Suleman has had a, tr a terrific sophomore season, and, and, you know, you find – Every game, he's doing something a little bit better. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, early on, he had a couple good games offensively. He, he strung together three or four double-doubles in a row. Um, you know, then he had a couple challenging games, and, and we did as a team. And now he's he's bouncing back. And in league play, he's a guy that, that's getting better defensively, I think, every day. I think he's a he's a force to be reckoned with on, the, on, on both glasses. Um, so he's a plus rebounder at our level already, and he's got a developing offensive game, which we're working on, you know, every day to improve. He's 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 uh, a big part of this year's team and a big part of the future. 22 assists for 32 made field goals. Find a buddy, share a buddy, whatever the drill you guys are doing <laughs> yeah. in practice. Man, it's paying some dividends. Yeah, Danny Manuel, our uh, our new director of basketball operation, um, he has a saying. He says, "Find a buddy." find a buddy so that's that's what he's been yelling and that's what our guys are starting to do and it's it's paying off i tell you man that was an enjoyable game to coach and watch i, I would think i mean we just that ball wasn't sticking at all we were just moving it around the perimeter moving it inside out early on versus the zone and we got wide open shots and and you know these guys are division one basketball players you make wide open shots at this level so yeah, we're about the same age. Remember those commercials? My buddy, yeah. my buddy. Anyway, now you have the three buddies, the big three, the core three, as Rob Kennedy called them on the broadcast. When you get San Antonio Brinson, Zach Cooks, and Shaquan Gibbs all playing well, this team can be tough to beat. The consistency has always been the thing for San Antonio Brinson, yeah. but are we starting to see that now? Yeah, I, I, I hope so. I think so. I mean, I've known Tone as long as anybody. Um, you know, I, I started recruiting him when I was at Delaware five years ago, and he, he's always been a kid that had a ton of potential, um, and we knew that. And, and, and um, you know, we were fortunate to get him here, and, and he had an up-and-down freshman year, and I thought he he, um, he had a nice sophomore season. And, and this year as a junior, we're expecting him to take, you know, the next step, and, and he's an important part of what we're trying to do if we're going to win games here this season. And, and um, he's had a good year, you know, and it's just, like you said, consistency. Um, and, and it really hurt when he went down and missed those two games. You know, we were trying to turn the corner earlier in the year, non-conference, and, and we lost that heartbreaker to Lowell and the heartbreaker to, to St. Francis Brooklyn. And, and, you know, those those were games that Tone was out. So, you know, he's back. He's healthy. Um, you know, defensively, his effort is becoming much more consistent um, as well as on the glass. And offensively, you know, he's scoring the ball. He's not settling for jump shots as much. He's attacking the rim. And when he's in attack mode, he's a much better player. We're a better team. And that opens up his perimeter game as well. And then the other thing you're seeing is he's got great court vision, man. And, and you know, I, I think he had another five assists tonight. And um, so he's really he's, – he's put together two or three 
you know, complete games in a row at both ends of the floor. And, of course, Zach Cooks bounced back beautifully, mm -hmm. 24 points, shot it very efficiently, especially early on. Before I let you go, you know, you have a little bit longer turnaround, but it's never that much t between Thursday and Saturday. Um, but this is a Kennesaw team look. The Highlanders would love to win a third game in a row and get above 500 in conference play, but maybe a team better than their record in the Owls? Very much so, and, and I haven't, you know, that Kennesaw is my scout. I haven't talked about it with the staff or anybody on the team because we were focused in here on Lipscomb, but... They're one in fifteen heading into tonight. Um, their their roster's been a revolving door. It's a new coaching staff. They they've played f fifteen different guys this season. This is the health healthiest they've been. They they had a couple kids sitting out first semester to the back now. Um, their backcourt is really good. Their backcourt's going to be really good. Um, the kid uh, Hooker's you know an all A son kid, and then um, and then they had a they have a transfer from Wake Forest that just became eligible five games ago, Lewis. So those two kids are a dynamic backcourt. We're going to have our hands full. We're going to have to come out and defend the way we have, and we're going to have to play well offensively. And, you know, we, we, we uh, like you said, we get a little longer break. The guys have the afternoon off now. We'll, uh, we'll get back to work tomorrow morning with them um, and have a good practice, good day of prep, and, and uh, you know, shoot around Saturday morning and then throw it up at 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon. We're looking forward to it. All right, well, enjoy this one. Get a cold Poland Spring seltzer water. Get yourself ready, and uh, we'll see you here Saturday. Sounds great. Thanks. Ho hopefully a similar result. Boy, these are a lot more fun after sure victories. Are. Highlanders win by 18 over Lipscomb, 2-2 two and two now in conference. We thank Jeff Rafferty. I'm Matt Province, and this is your most recent version of the Raff Report.